We now come to one of the most heroic epochs in the history of electric lighting. It all centers here at this historic chest of drawers. It was here where Edison toiled for months in trying to make a stable filament for his lamp, a filament that had a high resistance and one of small radiating surface. He had to get a glass blower in order that he could conveniently work and get ahead and not wait until such experiments came from Philadelphia or some other city that, as he had done formerly. He had to study carbonizing in all its details. Many were the nights, and I witnessed them when that master took his filaments, his raw ones, put them in a mold, and then took them downstairs in order to carbonize them. He watched, he studied, and he had to become a master in carbonizing, and he surely did attain that. Here is the place where Mr. Edison carbonized the first filaments for, incand for his incandescent lamps. Ev he himself personally went to all the pains in studying the art of carbonization. His first filaments naturally were no good, but he kept on persistently night after night in putting his raw filaments in the mold, packing them, and then inserting them in this muffled furnace. This furnace was made by Mr. Ford, and in it is incorporated most of the pieces of the old furnace that was once at Menlo Park. In those old days, we could see Edison at night working on the furnace, getting, tending to his molds that were inserted there. And generally, it took 10, 12 hours to carbonize. Later on, he carbonized for 30, 40 hours. His first experiment was with the carbon putty lamp, tar and putty. He ground up various kinds of carbon into a flour, then mixed them with tar, and then rolled them out on something like this until he got a filament. By the way, that void filament is, was first introduced by Edison in the art. No one ever mentioned that word before. After he had made that filament of carbon putty, he carbonized it, and then came the work. The work to get that filament connected to the uh, leads of the stem of the lamp. Well, I know Bachelor, it took him often hours to connect a filament to the stem. And then it happened when we, when it was taken over to the glass house, that in opening the door, a gush of wind blew that filament in two, and love's labor was lost. Various other experiments were made. He tried threads made out of silk, out of cotton, out of linen, and many other substances. And all during this time, he acquired a greater and greater dexterity in manipulating. That also was one of the great success. Then it happened that one day, he said to his secretary, Griff, write to Clark, Clark in Newark, you know, where Bachelor put up that machinery when he came from England and have them send me 
a pound of cotton thread and tell them I want it specially prepared for this purpose. And he gave instructions. In about a week, that thread arrived. And it appeared like this. This too is cotton thread from Clark. Well, carbons were made from this thread. He soaked them with various kinds of hydrocarbons, manipulated them, and carbonized them. After lots of trouble, he managed to get a lamp that was complete and ready for to be put on the pump. Here we have the lamp. The lamp whose light-giving element is cotton thread. The first lamp that was destined, although we did not know it, to be the light of the future. It was here at this end of the table where the Edison microscope always stood during those exciting days of electric lighting. It was here where he at least analyzed and scrutinized the structure of at least 5,000 different kinds of vegetable fibers, roots, grasses, herbs that came from all parts of the world. With his close observation of their structural uh, cross-section, Edison determined whether one or the other was fit to be taken and used as a raw filament in making uh, an experimental lamp. And so it went on for months until at last bamboo came. And the bamboo held the fort for years and became the commercial lamp. 